This is the LEGO Creator Expert modular set, The Bookshop. Or just Bookshop, technically speaking. Released in 2020, this set has, I can't remember, 2,504 pieces, and it retails for $180 US. Since it was released back in 2020, we can expect this set to retire by the end of 2022, if current LEGO trends and rumors prove to be true. So if you're a collector of the LEGO modular sets, be sure to grab this one as soon as you can. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at the actual set, starting with the build. Amazingly, this was my first LEGO modular build. The build was actually pretty fun. I was kind of worried because whenever you're building buildings and it's just a bunch of walls, sometimes it can get a little bit boring, a little bit repetitive. But while this set is sold as one set and it is attached together in all of the product images, it's actually two buildings that can separate apart from each other. So you're not just building one continuous building and that makes the build all the more enjoyable. There weren't any really complex piece usages on either of the builds. There was a few details here and there that I thought were pretty clever and worked really well and I'll talk about that in a minute. But overall, I found the build pretty enjoyable mainly because of the piece types. The choice of colors with these buildings is really nice. First you build the bookshop itself, which is this sort of uh, sand, reddish sand color, which I thought was very visually appealing. And then the second building you build is that teal house, which I also think looks pretty cool. The colors are just really nice and they play well together. Overall, I just think that this build it was average, it wasn't incredible, but it certainly wasn't boring. It was enjoyable and quite relaxing. Hi guys, it's Joe from Brick Theory. Real quick, before we check out this really awesome LEGO set, remember that I'm gonna be doing giveaways at 500 and 1,000 subscribers, so that's coming up. I already did one for my 100 subscribers. You know I'm legit, it's cool. I'm gonna be giving away LEGO gift cards so that you can get some LEGO sets. All you need to do to enter is to like this video, subscribe to the channel so we can hit those giveaway markers, and comment down below what your favorite LEGO genre is. Best of luck to you and everybody who's gonna be entering the giveaway. Moving on from the build, let's take a look at the individual buildings, starting with the bookshop. Like I mentioned, the bookshop is in this really appealing, sort of dark clayish sand color, which I just think looks really good. And you combine that with the dark red roof and some stone detailing in the front, and I just think that the building is very visually appealing. But let's work our way from the outside to inside. Outside, obviously, you have this birch tree, and it's fall, so the leaves are falling off the tree. And you've also got the bird's nest, which is situated inside that birch tree, making use of a fancy Lego minifigure piece. I think it's sort of a, a fur piece that will go around the neck of a minifigure. That's some really smart piece usage there. I like to see stuff out of the box like that. At the base of the birch tree, you've got this little planter which uses some black hot dog pieces to make a little wrought iron design, which I think is also very clever. Behind that, there's an exterior bookshelf just for some used books or things that they didn't have room for in the store. And finally, some basic but pretty tiling on the sidewalk welcoming you in to birch books, aptly named. This is a modular building, so I don't think I really need to specifically mention this, but it is designed that you can remove all three of these floors. Starting with the ground floor, let's take a look at the bookshop. Inside, over the door, you get a nice look at that green glass window. And once the minifigure walks into the shop, directly to his right, you've got a little bookshelf. This was a mini build that you kind of do on its own and then attach it inside. And while it wasn't super complicated or fancy to build, I think that there's a simplicity of it that is really pretty. Inside, behind the windows, you've got some simple display cases where you can put some books out in the windows for people to see. And if they come in and want to buy those books, you can check them out at the little checkout counter to the left. If you remove the second story balcony, you can get a look at some more bookshelves that are underneath in that area, which aren't really clearly visible unless you do remove this, but luckily it's designed to be removed. That green carpeted balcony is led up to by a very pretty spiral staircase, which again is simple, but just looks very pretty. And I think that this is sort of a theme that you were gonna see for the rest of this set is simplicity, but pretty simplicity. Speaking of beautiful simplicity, this entire ground floor is tiled with a nice gold, yellow, and orange floor. When I say it out loud, it doesn't sound like that would look really good, but the designer made some awesome choices there, some bold choices, and I think it paid off because it's very appealing to look at, especially this little rounded step going up to the door. Moving on to the second floor, we can see that the staircase from the first floor comes out underneath that green spiral staircase, which continues. This is sort of the living area for the bookshop owner. You've got a grandfather clock, which was a really fun little build, as well as a black leather chair, a little lamp, and a table underneath the window to place his mug on while he's trying to relax. 
There's a glass door that goes out to an exterior balcony, which is pretty bare, but you do have two seats if you want to relax with a friend back there, drink some coffee, or read a couple books. This second floor is adorned with archway windows, which I think look very pretty, and you can look through them and see that beautiful birch tree out front. Now moving up to the top floor, this one actually opens up halfway with this back section, and it's pretty bare, but there's not a whole lot of space up there. And they did fit in a little teal bed and a chameleon in a terrarium. Outside on this top floor, you've got some wrought iron bars up top in case somebody's working on the roof, they don't fall off. And some of that lightly detailed masonry making use of those light gray tiles, as well as some microphone pieces which are colored light gray to make little designs up top. That'll conclude our little tour of the bookshop. Now let's take a look at the Teal apartment building. Or on second thought, I don't think it's an apartment building. I think it's more of a single family townhouse. In my opinion, the Teal townhouse has some very visually appealing things going for it right off the bat. First off, this entryway to the actual house is raised up a couple of bricks off of the sidewalk. Those steps are guarded with some wrought iron rails, making cool use of these sort of twirly swirly pieces. But I want to call your attention to the usage of the shield tile and that sort of half two by two slanted tile, if that's what it's called. I don't know the technical term. These two pieces fit together perfectly to make an angle with the stairs. And while that's not like super complicated or difficult to build, I think it's very clever. And there's a line between complex and clever of good building. And I think that this is just really solid building. And I, I never would have thought to use those that way. And it just works perfectly. I've also got some simple but beautiful detailing around the entryway of the house. And the front room here has this beautiful rounded window, which makes good use of these sort of candlestick pieces, at least that's what I call them, to fill in the gaps in between the window panes. That white molding around the doorway continues up to these top windows, and so does the usage of the candlesticks to make a nice rounded, clean detail around them. The roof makes use of one by one quarter pie tiles. These give the appearance of shingles, and I think it's a nice little detail, which wasn't super fun to build to get them all lined up perfectly, but it is visually appealing for sure. Now let's take a look at the inside, starting with not the first floor, but the crawl space. Because remember this building is lifted up a couple of bricks off of the sidewalk and this isn't enough height to get a full floor there but we do have some space for a crawl space this appears to be where the family is storing a ladder for some maintenance some shears whatever is in this bag and a little mouse trap this area can be accessed from this little door outside or from these stairs that lead up to the kitchen on the first floor. Speaking of the kitchen on the first floor, let's take a look. Well, I said kitchen, but it's sort of not a kitchen. It's like a little sitting area with a cabinet. It's more of a more of an entry area and a dining room. It looks like the family has been having tea or coffee in the morning while reading a newspaper. They like to relax by this simple, but again, beautiful fireplace, or maybe read one of those books from next door sitting on this orange futon in the front window. Now moving on up the stairs, we can check out this third and final floor of the townhouse. Just like the bookshop, you access this floor by taking off the back of the piece and not just fully the top. But inside you will see a pretty big bed and a dresser that is adorned with a golden lamp with a little green light shade, as well as a purple flower pot and looks like a painting of the San Francisco Bridge. When you put this back piece back on, you can see that the bedroom also has access to a balcony and they've got some planters out there. The stairway up to that third floor also has a little slanted window that you can prop open if it gets really hot in the summer. Finally, since there is a fireplace in the building, of course, you've got to have the chimneys up top. Now that we've seen the buildings, it's time to introduce you to the minifigures. This set comes with five of them. You've got the bookstore employee. Next up, you've got the guy with the tie who's probably interested in more than just books when he goes to the bookstore. Then you've got an older couple, perhaps a grandpa and a grandma, and then finally, maybe it's their grandchild. He's running around playing with his new toy. Let's just hope that it doesn't get caught in the tree. Overall, I really like this set, and as my first modular set, I definitely enjoyed the experience, and I like the minifigures quite a bit as well. There are a few negatives to it though, and one of them is that the back of the set really does not have much detail. It's enough to get by, but overall, just pretty bland. I don't know, it doesn't really irritate me, it's just... It's not great, it's not impressive, and the same sort of goes with the sides of the buildings. The side of the bookshop is okay, so you've got this nice brown color, and it's broken up with some of these darker brown pieces here and there. 
you could you could look at this side just fine if it's the end of your modular set but the blue townhouse really does not look good enough for that you've got this big dark area which is where the fireplace is and you know no building looks like this on the side I don't want to be super critical of this though because obviously these are designed to be displayed with other modular buildings or just looked at front on so when you're talking about sides that are going to be hidden anyway I, I, I don't want to deduct any points for this, but maybe if you've got it set on an end table, just make sure that this side isn't visible, right? There you have it. That is my review of the Lego Bookshop set. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos like this every single week. Until next time, guys, happy building.